All right, welcome back, Digital Electronics. Uh, we're moving forward here. Uh, we're going to be talking about uh, multiplexers and demultiplexers. Okay, so we're going to talk about what the basic function of a multiplexer is. All right, the different types. All right, and what they mean. And then we're going to talk about what the basic function of a demultiplexer is and different types. And then we'll talk about you know how we can use a multiplexer or a demultiplexer to uh, display messages on uh, you know seven segment displays and things like that. Uh, so what is a multiplexer? Okay, so what we want to think about is we are combining a bunch of signals, okay, or into one output, okay. So we have a bunch of different inputs that combine to be one specific output destination. So we're we're essentially multiplying a bunch of signals together and outputting them as one. We're combining them. So you know, think about you know if you're sending out like a radio wave or things like that you're compacting that signal sending it out all right but this is still for plugging things in okay so some different types of uh, you know multiplexers we have a two to one so that means we can do two inputs and it creates one output uh, we can have a four to one so four inputs creates one output an eight to one okay selects and creates one output and a sixteen to one so I can plug sixteen things in and it'll output to one. So some examples of this. All right, some of this is a little bit, you know, older on uh, you know the slide here, things like that. But if you have a home stereo system at your house, okay, so like a stereo receiver. So that stereo receiver has auxiliary uh, in, uh, inputs. It has video inputs, right? So you can do you know uh, DVD or your cable box or your satellite dish, uh, different things like that. Uh, you can plug your laptop in, produce sound. So what that is is your stereo receiver receives all these different input signals, all right, and it does it to one output, and it goes to your stereo system uh, for like sound and things like that. All right, so that's kind of you know we're taking a bunch of signals and we're kicking it out. So I can just move the switch, all right. So if I want to move from like my phone music or my Google Home music or things like that. I can just flip a switch, all right, or I need to, I want to watch TV on, I don't want to watch Netflix anymore, I want to watch my cable box, so I got to flip a switch so it changes inputs. So that's essentially what it's doing, right? Uh, same kind of concept, you know, with your, you know, your TV being that single destination, right? You plug in your one HDMI cable, but if you go through your stereo receiver, right, you can still watch your your cable TV or your satellite TV, you play your Xbox, your PlayStation, you can it'll handle it all and you just tell it which input to output from the stereo receiver to the TV. So that's what a, a multiplexer is. We can plug a bunch of different things into it and send out one signal. Okay, so here's a simple design for a multiplexer. This is a four to one. Okay, where A and B represent the switch here. So, you know, if, uh, if you have like three HDMI um, inputs on your TV and maybe a USB port because you got a Roku or something that you want to plug in. So, or you have photos that you want to watch on your TV, right? So, you know, zero, zero might represent HDMI one. Zero, one might represent HDMI two. One, zero might represent HDMI three. So those are all the different input selections, you know, that you have on your TV. And each one of those is going to go to something else. Your cable box, your Xbox, all those different sort of things. Whatever your, whatever high definition signal uh, that you're sending in. So the D's are the inputs, okay? Or I'm sorry, those are the, uh, the the lines that are coming in with that, okay? That we're combining. So if I'm in switch zero, zero, so say your PlayStation or your Xbox is hooked up to HDMI one, and HDMI one is zero, zero. So that D is going into zero, zero, okay? So that's HDMI one that's coming from your Xbox or PlayStation. And then the Y, okay, is going to be your uh, your TV that it goes out to. Okay, so you know how do the waveforms look, and what you're really doing, and is how you're controlling them. So our input data, okay, those are going to be based on you know A and B. Whether we're watching TV or you got uh, you know your PlayStation hooked up or those sort of things, you're toggling between those. And the output that signal, that's what's going to your TV. So you know whether you're broadcasting your PlayStation signals, you're playing video games. Or you switch over and you're watching, you know, a football game or something on your satellite dish, you know, same kind of thing there. That's what that signal is going to uh, represent. 
Okay, so let's talk about you know medium scale integration here, and how that you know how it looks for us as a chip. Okay, I don't have I don't think like a 16 to one multiplexer or things like that, uh, but you know if we have a four to one, this is what it's going to look like. Okay, so we have our enable that turns our multiplexer on and on. All right, and then when we have a four to one, we have two selector switches A and B, and the combination of those is a truth table. So zero zero through one one. So if we take a look at the 8 to 1 multiplexer, okay, we have our 8 inputs, which are D0 through D7, and then we have our control switches now. So since we have 8 inputs, we have to be able to control 8, so we're going to need a 3-bit uh, input system for the table. So our truth table will now be 0, 0, 0 through 1, 1, 1, right, so that we can count 0 to 7, which acquires the 8 inputs there. And likewise with the uh, 16 to 1 multiplexer, notice what changes are uh, our switches. So A, B, C, and D, those are our switches that we're going to go through. We have to have four bits of input there because we have to go 0, 0, 0, 0 through 1, 1, 1, 1 because that will enable 0 through uh, 15 to be toggled through. So uh, our enable, our G0, that's what's going to turn it on or off. All right, and then we have our different outputs. All right, we got uh, tilde Y, which inverts Y, or it's tilde W, sorry, uh, in this. So the little tilde W means that we're uh, inverting the output. Just like, you know, when we originally talked about flip-flops, you had Q and Q bar. This is Y and tilde W, okay? So th that's all we're doing, though, is in case we want the opposite signal uh, to come out of our multiplexer for one reason or another. All right, so let's talk about a demultiplexer now. What a demultiplexer does is it does the exact opposite of a multiplexer. All right, so what it does is it takes one input source and it selects them all to different possible outputs. Okay, uh, you know, think about uh, you got satellite TV coming in or your cable box coming in, right? When you get that signal that comes in from like your satellite, comes in as like a wavelength, right? A specific frequency, but then when it gets to your box that's inside your house, it unpacks it all so that you have all the local channels or you have all the movie channels, and you have it, it unpacks all that. It demultiplexes uh, the signals there in that case. Okay, so uh, we're just doing the we're, we're it's one signal and we're unpacking, so we're kind of undoing what the multiplexer does. So same concept here. We got a one to two, a one to four, a one to eight, and one to sixteen. So that's what we're doing with a demultiplexer. All right, and we can select which line we want uh, to be as an output here. All right, so now it's, uh, you know, let's take a look at a, sorry, the picture's a little old school here, but we got our computer, right? And then what's hooked up to a computer? You got uh, a printer, all right? You might have a color printer, and we might have a plotter. We might have a 3D printer, all right? Fax machine, um, you know, all kinds of different things. Uh, that it's going to hook up to. We might put our Arduino, right? So what I what really what you want you to think about is that D0, D1, D2, D3. Those are kind of like the USB outputs on your laptop or your computer, all right? So that that's why you can walk over. Oh, I'm going to charge my phone, plug my phone in, okay? All those different things. So think of those as little USB ports on the outside of your computer or your laptop. And that's really what we're doing. How many different things can we, uh, you know, control there. So we have to find a way to control that signal, right? Now your computer's a little different, right? Because it can auto-detect if you've plugged into a specific uh, USB port. But when we talk about uh, Adrenos later on in Adreno boards, uh, when you go down and select, it says, you know, uh, you're on COM1 or COM2 or COM3 or COM4. Those are your different ports uh, that you plug into. So those are called COMs on your computer. All right, but essentially, right, now 0, 0 selects a specific output. Okay, so if I go back to like the satellite TV kind of thing, you know, zero, zero might be channel two, zero, one might be channel four, you know, one, zero might be channel um, 31 or something like that. Now, channels aren't very good with two inputs, obviously, because, you know, you're going to have more than four channels with your TV. But I just want you to understand that, you know, you know, toggling the switch or you changing the channel on your room or your remote changes you know what's being output like to the TV in that scenario thing so we can read through the timing diagram <coughs> relatively you know the same kind of way you know depends on where our input data is and how it goes through and what's selected alright so you know I didn't spend a lot of time on the last timing diagram maybe we'll talk about it on this one so if we look you know at the specific outputs so let's look at S0 through S1 
Okay, those are the lines that we select. And then, you know, based on the lines that we select, S0 and S1, right, that's 0, 0. Well, what comes on in 0, 0? Notice D0 goes high. That's where the red is. D1, D2, D3 are low. And then as S, is, um, as S goes to uh, 1, 0, then what happens? D0 goes down. D1 goes high. D2 and D3 are still low. Okay, and then look at the next signal. So then we, uh, I'm looking at S0 and S1, okay, and then we're at the third uh, column in. So S0 is 0 and S1 is 1. Well, what happens there? D0 is still 0, D1 is still 0, or goes to 0, sorry, and then D2, all right, stays 0. Why? Well, what's happening there? X, the input date is 0. Okay, so just be careful. It may or may not toggle on the other one. It's also based on what the input date is. So. Um, we're we're going to cover this a lot more in class and kind of go into detail about understanding the signals and things like that. But I uh, just want to make sure that uh, you guys are able to you know analyze this graph and understand that it's a combination of the input data as well as the select line zero or S zero and S one. Okay. So same kind of concepts here. All right. If we do medium scale integration, uh, as far as that goes. You know, circuits medium scale because you know the number of bits we're talking about. So we got two bit, three bit, and four bit uh, when we're doing this. So you know, how many different outputs that we can get from selecting through specific inputs? Okay. So seeing is not always believing. Okay. So it's just like when you watch TV, you think that your television set is on, but it's not. The LEDs in your TV and any type of signal that's being broadcast to you is actually flashing on and off really fast. Uh, so you can check like, you know, some cameras, if you have a really, really good camera, you can hold it up to like a, a computer monitor and you can actually see the lines going down the monitor. Uh, that's because your camera can actually pick up the speed at which the refresh rate is on the screen. So, uh, you know, some of you guys are video gamers and you're, it's really important like how many you know, FPS that you're getting. Uh, think about that. Frames per second, that's how fast that it's actually going to flick for you so that, you know, you can speed up and see things better. So all the displays that we see, all right, even the ones pictured here, they're not constantly on. They look constantly on to you and I because it fools your eyes because the cycle speed is so fast that it, it you know, creates like, it looks like it's on to us, but it's really not. It's constantly flashing, all right? And we can able, we're gonna build a circuit uh, in multi-sim that allows us to do this. I think everybody home can still do this one as well with the multi-sim on live uh, online. I haven't tried it yet, but I'll take a look. Elsa, if you need me to give you multi-sim uh, on a machine, uh, come in. I'm working on a way to see if we can uh, also uh, log in from home uh, as well, remote login. But All right, so if we take a look at this circuit here, this circuit, if we just hardwire it, notice there's nothing controlling this circuit. It's all, what, common cathode, right? We know because the output's going to ground there at top, right, and the 5 volts is turning it on. All right, so we know it's common cathode because one turns it on and zero turns it off. So what's this saying? This is saying chow, all right? So it's like hello in Italian. It's kind of got multiple meanings, I guess. But um, it works, but it's not very efficient, right? We can't change this if we want. This is going to always say the same exact thing, okay? So just so you know, there's another way that we can kind of do this so it'll cycle through. So say so we don't want the letters on all the time or we want an, a catchy advertisement, okay? Here's one way where we can use a multiplex signal. Okay, so what can we really do? So remember, all right, if we look at this chow, remember that it was common, you know, cathode. So we're using the inverter. So we're going to use a demultiplexer, and we are manually selecting it in. So we can say that uh, we're going to send in uh, five volts and ground, okay, to our to our lock-in up there, and then we're going to use switch A and switch B to toggle through our selections, right? So we're going to go 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. Why A and B? Because there's only four possible outputs that we want to use on this demultiplexer here uh, when we do this, okay? So we can do it so when it toggles and it's in the 0, 0 state, all right, we can get it so uh, Z uh, comes on and the rest, uh, C comes on and the rest come off, all right? Then when we go 0, 1, the I will come on, everything else will be off, okay? And, and so on and so forth. So we'll do each letter, you know, one at a time. And you guys will do this lab in multi-sim so you can kind of see. But this still isn't practical, right? Because if you walk by a billboard or something like that, there's not a person 
secretly standing you know behind there that's running through a, a manual selector and, and pushing these little switches to make the lights go on in a nice uniform manner right they're all programmed so we're gonna see um, you guys are gonna do this in class uh, so we'll kind of go through that you'll build this circuit and go through it but this is a way we would complete the design so that it runs automatically and we've talked about using a ripple counter right uh, we did this with the board game uh, as well and uh, you're going to be doing this because you're going to actually uh, make a stoplight uh, using some flip flops and things like that uh, based on state machines when we get there so but remember that these are the flip flops and we can continually cycle through them and we'll use these two flip flops and they are going to constantly go zero 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 one one zero one one and then start over zero 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 one one zero one one okay and we use that uh, doing date of birth as well I made you guys do that uh, piece so that it was automated there at the end and we've we've talked about flip-flops throughout class but that's where we can use this all right to fully automate this sign so now it's gonna go C I A O C I A O C I A O all right and there's not gonna be a little magical person standing back there hitting buttons all right, this is so that we can fully automate and complete our design so that it's automatically going to flash the letters. Or we can design it so it flashes in certain states uh, and things like that. So we could make it so it actually just flashes the word, you know, on for like zero, zero, off for zero, one, on for one, zero, and off for one, one. We can also do something like that. All right, so. Alright guys, well that's the end of the lecture. So we talked about uh, demultiplexers and multiplexers. Remember multiplexer, alright, we're taking multiple signals and outputting to one signal. Demultiplexer, we're taking one signal, filtering out all those signals and putting it out to different, uh, putting out multiple different signals from one signal where everything was kind of compacted into one. Alright, and then, you know, just being able to use a multiplexer to automate something uh, along with our flip-flops. All right, guys, as usual, like I said, uh, if you have any questions, uh, email me. Uh, let me know if you need to uh, team meet or Zoom meet or anything like that.